Welcome to the seventh in our 3D printing for remote control series. Now the thing we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to take the arms of this quadcopter and we're going to reproduce them as an STL file that we can send to our printer and print out. Now we have looked at this model in one of our other video series, I'll put the link in the description, but what I'm more interested in is scanning these arms and making a copy so that if we break one, then we don't have to necessarily go and buy another carbon fiber one, we can print up replacements on our 3D printer. Now obviously this is going to be a high impact area. Uh, the arms on this are only a couple of millimeters thick, so I'm not expecting that once we start to fly this in anger that it'll survive many tough crashes, but I can print them in three millimeter ABS or potentially even three millimeter nylon, which would be exceedingly strong, potentially a little bit heavier, but it would mean that with the purchase of a couple of longer screws, I can actually have spares on tap without having to worry about buying more carbon fiber style arms that are gonna break on me again. So what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to remove the arm off this model. We're going to use a little scanner to take a very high resolution 2D image. And then we're going to use that image inside SketchUp to actually trace both the outside of the arm, but also to spot where all of the holes and other pieces are too. And I'm going to take you through the process from start to finish. Hopefully by watching this, it means that at the end of it, if you have a quadcopter and um, you are worried about things getting broken, you can use this little process to very quickly and easily make sure that you have spares on tap from your 3D printer within an hour or two of snapping something off, or potentially even then going and modifying the design so that maybe there's a bit more material around an area that is a little bit weak and seems to be breaking. So the first thing we're going to do is put these two arms on top of a scanner. I'm going to do one of the front and one of the rear arms. They're both identical each side. So once I've created an STL model for each of them, I can print them out. Um, or we can actually flip them once I've got it all designed. So I'm going to take each of these two arms off, put them side by side in the scanner, and then let's have a look at the image. So here's the image as we actually got it off the scanner, um, as high a resolution as you can get away with, try for as high a contrast. If you're struggling to get a nice image, then just play around with the settings. What you really want is as crisp and as high contrast an image as possible. It just makes everything easier from there on in. What I would recommend is to crop the image as small as possible, and although there are two arms on this image, I'd recommend that you crop it so that you have two files, a JPEG or something like a PNG file preferably, uh, one with one arm in and one with another. And once you've got those, then the next thing we need to do is go into SketchUp and start getting ready to actually trace this outline and make our own version of it. So here we are in SketchUp and uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to download it. It's a free program. SketchUp, as we've looked at earlier in the series, is uh, my preferred method for doing this kind of stuff rather than doing lots of very gentle curve things. So what we'll do is, first of all, let's just select by um, left-clicking and delete the MakerBox Replicator box. We don't need that. A quick reminder, the way we navigate around here is mainly going to be press the H key for the hand menu. Now that is the one that you can pick up here by clicking on this. Uh, we're going to use the circle or C menu an awful lot as part of this. And we're also going to click O for orbit, which is the one that allows us to move everything around. So the first thing we need to do is import the actual image of the arm that we want to replicate or the part we want to replicate in SketchUp. So we're going to go to File, Import, we're going to click one of the images, just make sure it's selected for JPEG or whatever this kind of image format is if you can't see it down here. We're going to go and do the front arm. So double click on that, just drag it to wherever, I'll stick it at the origin and then you've got to size it. Now if I just click O and move it around and we'll zoom in very slightly using the middle mouse wheel, press H for hand move it in. The thing that we don't know at the moment is whether or not that flat image is actually at the right resolution. So the very first thing we need to do is scale this. Now I happen to know that from the tip of that point 
back to the edge is 114 millimeters on the actual part. I've measured it with a ruler. So we can actually size this image here in SketchUp so it's the real size. So when we print it out, it'll be the same size. So what we need to do is click on the ruler. We need to zoom in and pop it right on the end of the piece, zoom out, zoom back in on the other end. And at the moment you can see that it's actually 315 and some millimeters. Now what we need to do here is actually type at the bottom 144 millimeters and hit enter. It'll ask us, do you want to resize the model? We press yes. Now we have to zoom back out and uh, press H for hand to recenter it, zoom back in. There we go. And now that should be the right size. Now the way to double check this is I know these two holes are spaced 20 millimeters apart. I've also measured that too. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and click on the tape measure again. I'm gonna click roughly in the center of that hole, roughly in the center of that. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's about 20 millimeters. So I'm confident that that image is the right size and it's gonna be perfect for us to use. So what we'll do now is we'll actually create pieces that'll become the cutouts for all of these different bits inside. So I'm gonna press H again. So we're gonna to have to make holes for the mounting holes, the different pieces along the arms, the actual spacer for the middle of the motor itself, and also for the mounting bolts. So the way I would recommend we do this is first of all, we'll create those pieces, then we'll create and we'll trace the outside of the arm, and then we'll use the bits that we've created for all these different holes to kind of punch holes in the arm shape so we end up with something that looks like this arm that we can 3D print. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll actually start making our pieces. So we want to zoom in so we're as tight as we can. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to select the circle, which is this tool over here. We can either click on this or we can press C. Now what you really want to do is get it as close to the middle as possible. You're gonna to have to eyeball it. You click and hold the mouse button and drag it out until it's the right size. I would recommend if erring on the side of caution, if it's fuzzy, I'd go slightly bigger, just so that way you will uh, make sure that you don't have to then try and file pieces out. Then we're going to press the P or push pull tool and we're just gonna click on the top of it and drag it up so it becomes like a rod. And then we're going to do that for the bottom piece as well. I'm gonna press H for hand to center it. Zoom in to give me the best chance. Press C for circle, or we can click on the circle on the left hand side. And again, we're gonna put it in the middle best we can. On there like that. Press P for push pull, push it up. We're gonna use the H hand tool again to bring us into the middle. Now, for something like this, the easiest way that I've found to do it is again, use the circle tool try and draw a circle at one end that takes care of one half of the shape. Okay, press the space bar to come out of that tool, click on the circle to select it, then click on M to move it, and then hold the control key, and you can drag it across into the other side, and then what you can do is use the pen tool just to connect the edges up, like that. Press E for a razor, and you can get rid of everything. There we go, we zoom out a little bit, press P for push pull and drag it up again. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna work my way along here. I'll speed up this a little bit, but I'm just going to follow that process for the entire piece.
So when you finished, it should kind of look like that. And what that means is that we're almost ready to do the next step. So now we've got that, we've kind of lined up all the pieces. Obviously take your time, make sure that you're getting it as accurate as you can. And then now what we're going to do is we're actually going to trace along the bottom edge so that we can actually pull it up. Now I've found the easiest way to do this is actually to flip the part upside down and actually trace it on the back. So we're gonna look at the underside. Again, we're gonna zoom in and use the hand tool to kind of move it around. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the line tool or L and we're going to start to trace the outline of the edge. So I'm gonna just pop it on the face I'm going to draw on there and then all I'm going to do is just try and trace round as best I can. And when you go around the corners I would use a couple of, um, rather than use radius, it's just use a couple of straight lines and just keep going around. Just see if I can do it. So all I'm doing here is zooming in and out uh, pressing H for hand to move it, then pressing L again to go back to my line tool. And all I'm doing is I'm just following the curve. Now because the way it this image is, I can't quite see the line, but I can see where the last point was. And all I'm doing is I'm just following it around. So let me just finish doing this. And again, the more time you take on this, the better the final part will be. And we'll come back and have a look at the finished result. Okay, so when we've gone all the way through, if we just flip it over, you can actually see the line on the top. What we're going to do is actually just select the um, image and get rid of it. Missed a couple of lines, let's just finish those up. So we're going to hit L for line, we'll just connect these up. L for line again at the top, and there we have our traced outline. So I'll just move that in there like that. Orbit it again, and this is the cool part. Now we press P for push pull, and we're going to pull it up. We're going to make it three millimeters deep, so I'm just going to type in three mm for millimeters. Hit enter, there's the height of our arm. That's great, that's now starting to look like a part we can use. And then the last thing we need to do is actually to get rid of all these extra little pillars and turn them into holes. An easy way to do that is just press P for push pull highlight the top of the pillar that you want to make into a hole, drag it down and then pop your cursor actually onto the bottom edge of the part and it'll get rid of the piece. So let me just do that with these holes because what's basically saying it needs to line up and now when I rotate it you can see that those are actually holes now. So let me just quickly finish that off. And then when you've finished doing all of those, it looks like that. So that's the kind of arm that we look. So we have the holes in it and we have all the different pieces as well. So that's how you do it. It's also using this method. I've also done things then like cut out around this piece here to actually make a motor mount so you can mount the mount as proud. But this is a great way if you have parts that are flat that you want to be able to kind of capture and then reproduce in your 3D printer. This is a way you can use a scanned image of something on a flatbed scanner, import it into SketchUp, then make a note of where all of the holes are put those in first and then sketch around the outside, extrude that so then you have the piece to then pop the holes into and that's what it looks like. 
it's that easy. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to make replacement parts. Um, and I would definitely say for the tarot that we're using, it's going to be handy to have these files. Now what I will do is I will put a link in the description to the STL files for these two parts. I'll also pop the motor mount in there for those of you that want to potentially use that too. And that way, if you don't have uh, SketchUp or you're not confident about doing it, you can still have access to the models. They're a little bit rough because I've just done them quickly for this demonstration, but they should be enough to get you going. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.